Hello, welcome to Glazing with Amico. This is Kara. Today I wanted to talk about clear glazes and under glazes and the choices that we make about clear glazes and under glazes. If you go on the Amico website, uh, we have a a menu that uh, gives you some more information um, about the choices you make for low fire or high fire, whether you're using under glazes or not under glazes, if you want a reactive glaze or you want something else. So I wanted to talk a bit about what, why we recommend those particular glazes. So for under glaze use, we generally refer everyone to use HF9 Zinc Free Clear if you're using cone 5 glazes. And if you're not using under glazes, to use HF10, which is a zinc bearing clear. Now I would like to point out that all of our clears except for HF10 are zinc free. So our satin matte clear is zinc free. Celadon mixing clear is zinc free. And the HF12 satin matte clear is also zinc free. So the only one that contains zinc is HF10. And the zinc is, is very useful for making a nice hard, shiny, bright, clear glaze. But the problem with zinc it's not a problem. The issue is that if you're using underglazes, certain colors will change with the presence of zinc. So I have an example. We have our velvet underglaze V345 light green, and we have V349 cactus, which are two very, very similar underglazes. The cactus just came out a couple of years ago, and I'm going to talk about why we developed cactus and what the advantages of, of it are, and um, how uh, V345 light green is affected by. So these are tiles that show, this is cactus with LG10, this is at cone 05, so low fire, this is not not with HF9 or HF10. These are low fire glazes. So this is 345 with LG10 and this is 349. So light green and cactus with the same glaze and as you can see they look pretty much alike. There's not a lot of variation. So if you're using low fire and you're using LG10 at low fire temperatures it doesn't make any difference. You can use whichever one you prefer. You're going to get a similar kind of response. Where the change comes in is when you go up to cone 5. So this is cactus with HF9 zinc free clear, HF10 the zinc bearing clear, SM10 C11 mixing clear, and HF12. And you can see the color is pretty much the same all the way across. There's not a lot of variation. Uh, in fact, there's almost no difference between HF9 and HF10. Very, very similar. That's cactus. That's our newer underglaze. However, you can see a big difference when you switch to uh, the V345 light green. This is HF10, zinc free clear. This is H HF9, HF10, which has zinc. And you can see the difference between the zinc free and the zinc changes that underglaze color rather substantially to a brown. Can you see that? I'm trying to do this without getting too much reflection. It's more brown, whereas with zinc free is more more green, more true to color. You will also notice that it is a little bit darker, so there is a variation. And if you're wondering about the grid, this is one coat, two coat, three coat of each of the clears. One coat, two coat, three coat. HF9, HF10, SM10, C11, mixing clear, 
HF12. So that was the purpose behind those new pink and green underglazes. I'm going to show you a more dramatic difference than cactus and light green. We have avocado green, cone 5, HF9, HF10. Can you see how much of a difference that makes? It is a very yellowy brown, really a dramatic difference. Now this is due to the kind of colorants that are in certain greens and interestingly that same colorant is also in pinks. So if you are relatively new to glaze chemistry or you have not uh, done a lot of mixing of glazes yourself, you may not realize that a lot of the colorants we use are the same even though the colors themselves are dramatically different. So chromium is the colorant in the older green underglazes and it will create uh, a, a warmer tone with the presence of zinc. Now the funny thing is that that actually works for pink underglazes. So here is V316 light pink, HF9 is a little more brown, HF10 actually looks pretty good. SM10 um, without zinc is, is a little bit brownish as is the mixing clear and the HF12 has a very um, uh, beige undertone. So what I used to say is, is pink likes zinc. So the pink actually did, the old chromium pink did better with the presence of zinc than without. So we created V317 coral and now regardless whether you're using zinc or zinc free you get the same bright pink all across the board. Isn't that nice? So that was the purpose if you were wondering why we suddenly had two new pinks and two new greens when we already had pinks and greens, this would be why. So when we suggest a zinc-free clear for underglazes, especially if you're using older formulations, it is uh, to keep the colors as, as true as possible because certain colors will change. So the other question that I sometimes hear is about uh, smudging. Smudging and dragging. So I've had some people who suggest, and you can see here in this tile, you see how that top line is like dragging down. I don't know how visible that is. The next line isn't really doing that and the line below is not doing it at, and the fourth line is not doing it at all. So some underglazes will drag with some glazes. It depends on the glaze and it depends on the underglaze. So in this case this is HF9 zinc free clear over four different underglazes. The top is V370 velour black which we use for a great many things and it does not flux even as high as cone 10 but the glaze did drag it a little bit because it was a very thick line. The second line was, let me check my notes, V336 Royal Blue and it looks a little bit hazy at the bottom but it's not really dragging. The next one is Jet Black V361 and it didn't drag, which is interesting because it will flux. And the fourth line is an LUG, LUG 20, and this one absolutely fluxes. It's almost a glaze at cone six, which this was fired to. And yet it didn't move at all because what's happening is the glaze is dragging the colorants and especially glazes that are very high in colorants and a glaze that moves a lot will drag more. So I did a few different things, same lines, but you can see how different glazes, this is HF12. This is 
LG10, a low fire clear glaze, fired to cone 6 just to see what it would do. And it moved the under glazes a little bit, but not a lot. And this is HF10. And you can see it kind of bubbled more and it didn't drag at all on the, on the uh, jet black. It did drag a tiny bit on the velour black, but you still have a better line, a, a crisper line with the uh, HF9 zinc free. And then just to see, I used an extremely runny glaze. And this is not an Amico glaze, but it is a very runny glaze. And it dragged the velour black to the point where it almost isn't even on the piece anymore as well as the jet black and the royal blue were just completely dragged. So you can see how those were lines and then they're not lines anymore. They're just all over the place. So dragging is partly a, common, uh, a process that happens because of the movement of the glaze rather than the underglaze itself. Sometimes people are worried that it has to do with applying their clear glaze, that they need to worry about smudging. It's not always smudging. Sometimes it's dragging. So if you hear me talk about something being dragged, that's a little different. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a demo with the smugs, and I didn't, I did not, um, uh, bisque fire it before I applied the clear glaze. I just applied the clear glaze right on top and fired it to cone 6 and you can see that the colors are a little different. Some of them are a little bit washed out. I lost some of my detail around my rice. Um, some of the colors are still very very opaque and some are more transparent. Now you'll notice that I don't have smudging the colors are softer, but they still look the same. They didn't move. And what I did to apply that first coat of glaze was, took a little bit of my glaze, and you can do it out of the jar, but I find it easier to do it in a small container instead. And with a clean damp sponge, and I don't have something that has underglaze on it already, uh, which would make it easier to see what I'm doing. But I gently, I take a sponge, clean sponge, and gently dab the glaze on for the first coat. Now once this is dry, you can go back and you can brush right over. But if you're worried about smudging and smearing your underglaze, you can always apply it as a sponge coat first. So just sponge it on gently, do the whole surface. And then, once that's dry, just take a brush, brush on normally for your second and third coats. So I do always recommend that people make their own test tiles to see how, not only how the underglazes will look, but also how they look the way that you apply them. So generally, underglazes need to be applied three coats um, to be opaque. So if you're using the uh, velvet underglazes, we do recommend three coats. Uh, I do sometimes use uh, an applicator and of course, when you have a very thick application, you can, if it's too thick, you have more chance of dragging. So those are the main points about using the zinc-free glaze and why we offer a zinc-free glaze and why we offer a zinc glaze. Um, as I said, zinc glazes are nice, shiny, hard, really durable but they can change your underglazes. So depending on which underglaze you're using and what you're looking for, you may want to choose a zinc bearing under uh, a zinc bearing glaze like HF10 or you may opt for HF9, the zinc free version. I hope that clears some things up about what the what the uses are, what the differences are, and if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments and uh, 
I will answer them offline. I hope that uh, you have a great day and we'll talk to you later.